Travel consideration provided by... Kayaking is my thing. Running is awesome. But her moderate to severe eczema would make her skin so uncomfortable. Now, I'm staying ahead of it. Dupixin helps heal your skin from within so they can have clearer skin and less itch. Serious allergic reactions can occur that can be severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems such as eye pain or vision changes, including blurred vision, joint aches and pain, or a parasitic infection. Don't change or stop asthma medicines without talking to your doctor. Ask your doctor about Dupixin. We ride together, we, we die, die together. together. Bad, Bad marriage, marriage for life. life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they weren't lying. No. Just when you thought you heard it all, Will and Jada blow our minds again. We leave you now with what is arguably the most confusing split of 2023. Is it a split? I don't know. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night, y'all. So from the year 2016, which is seven years ago now, <laughs> yes. y'all have been apart. Yeah. What was the reason? I think just not being ready yet. Mm. Still trying to figure out how do we present that to people, you know? And we hadn't figured that out. But you still live separately. We live separately. So was their union just for the cameras, misleading the public to think it was merely an unconventional marriage? We have found so much happiness in our union yep. in a way that's very different than most. In 2020, the truth was buried even further when Jada introduced this phrase. I got into a different kind of entanglement. Happening now. A memorial being planned for later this week for the hundreds of homeless people who died in the past year. We talked with some of those grieving their loved ones. It's almost showtime between UTSA and Marshall in the Scooters Coffee Frisco Bowl. Will senior quarterback Frank Harris play? We'll have the latest coming up in sports. Planning to hit the road for the holidays? Coming up, we'll show you some of the cheapest gas in town to fill up your sleigh. The clouds have been moving in and get used to gray in the sky and some dampness on the way, including some showers as well. We'll talk about it all in just a few minutes. At first at five, whether on the streets or in a shelter, more than 300 homeless people died in our community this year. And that's according to data from Sam Ministries. That group is holding its annual Homeless Persons Memorial later on this week. Our Garrett Berenger spoke with the organization about why so many homeless people are passing away. Every day. Never found her. Never found her. Aiden Perez spent weeks looking for his fiance, riding the bus, hoping to see her. Just look as we we're going down the road, and we knew more or less what motel she would rent over there. Until staff at Haven for Hope delivered the bad news on Monday that he would never find her, that she died after being hit by a car. I haven't seen her in a long time. I miss her. Perez's fiance is one of 326 people that Sam Ministries has tallied as having died while experiencing homelessness this year in Bear County. Oldest person was 94. Youngest person on the list is 11 days old. Sam Ministries has been tracking deaths for 17 years. 2022 had been their highest year, but this year is nearly double. Its CEO thinks it's because Sam is aware of more deaths and more homeless people in our area are dying. As far as what's driving these deaths? Of the um, 80 or so individuals that we have been able to identify cause of death, I am speaking anecdotally. Um, it looks to me like the largest driver is overdose, addiction. That's how Marty Saldana says his friend died a few months ago. Though his name was not on Sam Ministry's list. He was a good friend. A jokester, <laughs> but he was a good friend. But in about 20 years of being homeless, Saldana has seen others die too. Life on the streets isn't easy. The elderly, is, it's, harder, it's harder for them, especially in the winter time. And a lot of them just go to sleep and don't wake up. I'm already getting up there in years myself, so and I'm trying to keep bundled up as much as possible. Sam Ministries will be holding its memorial Thursday evening at 7 o'clock. It'll happen here at Milam Park on Commerce Street. Downtown, I'm Gary Berger, KSAT 12 News.
somber reminder there of people living on our streets. Well, two other news now accused of crashing into cruisers. Five teenagers arrested last night after San Antonio police say they crashed a stolen vehicle into two SAPD patrol cars. Police say this happened about 3.30 this morning in the parking garage of the Agave Apartments on South St. Mary's. According to police, a call came in about that time for a car that pushed through the gate of the garage. When police tried to talk to the teens, they drove out of that garage, crashing into the patrol vehicles and then another security car. All five teens were arrested. Their ages range from 15 to 17. People on the southeast side of town heard some loud booms today, and they're going to hear more of that tomorrow. The San Antonio Police Department's bomb squad is conducting training exercises. They go from noon through 2 p.m. So people in the southeast San Antonio area could hear all the activity, but there's no reason to worry. The holiday travel rush expected to be busy this year with more than 100 million people expected to fly this season. From coast to coast, TSA says they'll screen close to 2.5 million passengers per day. On top of normal holiday travel, weather already playing a big role in flights. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg says his department working closely with airlines to prepare. Get down to the minute weather predictions from National Weather Service meteorologists and use those to inform exact arrival and departure routes across the busiest parts of the U.S. airspace. The travel site Expedia says today is actually the best day to fly during the holidays. It's also the cheapest, the busiest air travel day, Thursday. That's the one you want to avoid. Now, also on the roads, more of the same. A lot of you are hitting the road to visit family, but before you fill up your tanks, 12 on your size, Marilyn Moritz looked for the cheapest gas and also found a surprise jump at the pump. Jesse Munoz is fueling up for his holiday rounds, driving for Uber. Your uh, sleigh doesn't run on reindeer? I wish, I wish it did, ma'am. I really wish it did. Local gas prices have dropped 25 cents in the past month to an average now of $2.57 a gallon. That's about the same as last year. But get this, we've seen a 13 cent jump in just the past 24 hours. So I try to save all of my little coins when I can, but I'm not gonna lie, I don't know what's going on right now, but gas prices are steadily raising and I wish they would go the opposite way. <laughs> it's just getting hard out here. Gas prices are seeing some volatility right now, but we did some checking. This is some of the cheapest in town, $2.25 a gallon at the Sam's Club off I-35. AAA tells us today's uptick is most likely due due to increasing demand ahead of holiday travels. Also, oil prices have increased this week as oil tankers have had to reroute around violence in the Red Sea. AAA says if that continues, prices could rise more. Just in time for Ethan Cornish and 8.3 million of his fellow Texans to hit the road for the holidays. Hopefully it'll come down to 98 cents a gallon when I was in uh, high school. I'll be really happy then. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Don't hold your breath on that one. All right, let's go to traffic right now outside Fortin and Blanco. You can see very busy traffic on both the access road getting on to 410 as well as the access road on the other side of 410 is something to be aware of as you're out and about heavy traffic at 410 and Blanco. And the clouds have increased. They've thickened up a little bit. We'll continue to see that trend through the night and get ready to wake up to a little bit of dampness to start the day tomorrow. We started off today at 47 degrees by the afternoon up to 68 and that's four degrees above average. And looking at temperatures right now, mixture of upper 60s, low 70s, 67 in Del Rio, 71 Floresville, 70 Panama Maria, comfortable outside. Meanwhile, 63 in Bernie and 65 in Maiko. As we go through the evening temperatures, just very slowly falling off. The clouds acting like a blanket out there and they'll continue to increase. Then it's going to lead to some fog to start the day tomorrow. We'll be back to look, take a look at the future cast for visibility in the mornings and get ready for more dampness ahead, including some showers. But we'll talk about how much rain we could actually see in just a bit. Adam, thank you. Now to the Middle East. Israel's president says that his country is ready for another humanitarian pause in the war with Hamas. But the intensity of the conflict not slowing down. Iranian-backed Iranian militants have launched new attacks on commercial ships in the Red Sea. ABC's Liz Landers has more from Washington. As tensions remain high in the Middle East, 
A new multinational group assembled to protect commercial ships in the Red Sea and Gulf of Aden after Iran-backed Houthi rebels in Yemen have launched more than a dozen attacks on commercial vessels recently. Dubbed Operation Prosperity Guardian, the task force includes the U.S., U.K., France and other countries who are lending resources. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin unveiling the coalition while in the Middle East and warning Iran of retaliatory options. We're going to make sure that we're doing everything that we can to uh, ensure uh, freedom of navigation uh, in the area. Smoke seen in Gaza along with explosions and fires Tuesday as Israeli troops launched more strikes. Israeli President Isaac Herzog said Tuesday he's open to another break from the fighting, but says it is up to Hamas leader Yahya Sinwar. Israel is ready for another humanitarian pause and additional humanitarian aid in order to enable the release of hostages. And the, uh, the responsibility lies fully with uh, Sinwar and the leadership of Hamas. The humanitarian situation in Gaza continues to deteriorate. The death toll now topping 19,000, according to the Hamas-run Gaza Health Ministry. The ministry also says more than 355,000 skin and infectious diseases have been detected. ABC's producer in Gaza visiting a soup kitchen that is feeding around 1,000 people per day of the more than 1 million displaced overall. As the U.S. urges Israel to move into a lower intensity stage of fighting, more than 120 hostages remain in Hamas captivity. CIA Director Bill Burns is meeting with Israeli and Qatari counterparts in Europe as they are hoping to help negotiate another humanitarian pause to allow for an additional hostage prisoner exchange between Israel and Hamas. In Washington, Liz Landers, ABC News. No matter how you say it, dignity, dignity, diggy, <laughs> neighbors in Dignity Hill can agree on a few things. Besides the rich history, the area offers some outstanding views. Our latest edition of Know My Neighborhood takes us just east of downtown, where we got a closer look at the issues that matter most to the people who live in this area. You can watch our full coverage on KSAT.com. Just scan the QR code on your screen to do your own deep dive. That was fun yesterday. It looked like fun yeah, in a, a beautiful time. area, too. Now, we still want you to stick around for this because we know this holiday food spending. Yeah, it could be a lot, but there are four things that you can do to save money. Plus, have you mailed out your holiday packages? These shipping deadlines coming fast. We're going to break down shipping deadlines from all the major mail carriers after the break. I'm Myra Arthur here in the newsroom with a look at what we're working on for the news at 6 o'clock today. Border Patrol says more than 14,000 people illegally crossed the U.S.-Mexico border yesterday. More than a third coming through Eagle Pass. That's one of two spots where Border Patrol says they suspended operations at the International Railway Crossing Bridges. We have a crew in Eagle Pass tonight to bring you the very latest. Plus, remembering a little boy who died in a horrific case of child abuse. It happened 20 years ago, but today, county leaders honored Giovanni Ochoa while demanding changes that still have not been made. And the city has a residential facility for unsheltered people dealing with substance use and mental health disorders. It used to have 140 beds available, but now only 45. We tell you why, and we take a tour of that facility. That and more coming your way today on the News at 6. Thank you, Myra. I'll see you then. Well, we are now less than a week out from Christmas, and time is running out to ship those gifts. Holiday shopping experts say 82 million packages being delivered daily in the U.S. alone. UPS says they expected to deliver more than 30 million a day globally. We have a great group of more than 500,000 UPSers all over the world helping us deliver in time for the holidays. Now to get those gifts delivered by Christmas, you still have time, but the longer you wait, the more it's going to cost. For UPS 3D Select and FedEx Express, savor today the deadline to make sure your packages arrive on time. For UPS Next Day Air, you have until Thursday, December 21st. And your last chance for FedEx same day shipping this Friday, the 22nd. The United States Postal Service tomorrow marks the last day to mail Priority Mail Express, and it is waiving 
holiday surcharges. So hopefully that'll help. Hopefully. So we know between the packages, the gifts, the food, yeah, the holidays are an expensive time of year. And it's really easy to go over budget, especially if you're hosting people. According to the National Retail Federation, a lot of consumers are budgeting more than $250 on seasonal food, candy and decorations. Many of us overspend during the holiday season because we don't go into the holiday season with any kind of spending plan at all. So let's change that. You can help lower your costs by deciding to a budget and sticking to it. Also, doing a potluck so not all the cost falls on you. Also, buy ingredients early on to avoid last-minute impulse purchases. And finally, just keep that decor simple and reuse decorations. Recycle, basically. She was a trailblazer, the first female justice on the Supreme Court, Sandra Day O'Connor, being remembered at the National Cathedral in Washington, D.C. today. Her casket carried into the cathedral as loved ones and former colleagues gathered. Chief Justice John Roberts, O'Connor's son Jay, and President Joe Biden all delivered eulogies at her funeral. O'Connor died on December 1st. She was 93 years old. Now, internationally, a volcanic eruption in Iceland is forcing thousands of people to evacuate the area. A state of emergency has been declared. More than 3,000 people have been forced to leave their homes. You see that eruption there is releasing toxic gases, and the Icelandic Tourist Board is asking people just not to go and visit. Take a live look outside right now. 67 degrees out there, and uh, all right, some wispy clouds. But we're going to get some rain coming up in the next few days. Yeah, some wispy clouds out there now. They're getting a little bit lower in the sky, and we'll be walking through the clouds tomorrow morning with the fog and a drizzle and mist. Damp mornings ahead. Get ready for the morning slop, as I like to call it. It's where the ground is wet. you got a, a few little puddles here and there, but the roads are damp. But... Not much to show for it. It's just that nuisance moisture, but we will have some sporadic light showers and then we are dry by Christmas. Let's take a look at our rain chances. Now keep in mind, this is for shower activity, actual showers. We're not talking drizzle. This is just the rain. 20% tomorrow, then 30 to 40% daily from Thursday all the way through Sunday, Christmas Eve. Here's the caveat. Morning drizzle, eh, pretty much 100% is what I'm thinking. That's why that, that morning dampness that we were talking about. But by Christmas Day, those rain chances fall off to 10%, and I'm tempted to give it the 0% for Christmas Day. Here's the satellite and radar. You see the mixture of clouds across the Lone Star State, many of them streaming in from the southwest, from the Pacific and passing over Mexico. We're actually watching this swirl here west of San Francisco. That's thrown some moisture into the western U.S. and some areas of rain. That's going to dive southward and set up this southwesterly flow aloft, which for us gives us little impulses of energy and even moisture coming in off the Pacific. And in turn, that boosts our rain chances a little bit. Don't expect a whole lot of rain, but periodic showers, as I showed you in those rain chances, 30 to 40 percent pretty much daily starting Thursday, lasting all the way through Sunday. And then this upper system, it's just going to camp out in the central U.S. It'll stir things up, but not a whole lot for us around here in terms of actual accumulations. Here's another way to look at it. Look at the precipitation potential covering most of the lower 48 here over the next seven days, partially because of that big wound up system. But around Texas, we could be talking two inches or more in east and northeast Texas around here over that several day span, maybe up to a half an inch total from everything. So you'll be dealing with reduced visibilities, morning dampness, and so on and so forth. But again, we're not going to get a whole lot of benefit out of it. Not much of a drought denting rain, even nonetheless drought busting. All right, let's talk temperatures and dew point. 67 out there right now, dew point of 48, southeast wind at 15. That southeasterly wind that's coming in off the Gulf of Mexico, already starting to creep those dew points a little bit higher. Still comfortable, don't get me wrong but that's going to change. It's going to feel a little spring like when it comes to the humidity by Friday, feeling the mugginess all the way through Saturday and Sunday, sticky, muggy out there. And that's just going to add to that morning drizzle and mist and morning slop potential, as I call it. Here's our future cast. This is for the visibility 
tomorrow. Notice by 3 a.m. areas of fog starting to develop, becoming a little more widespread as we approach sunrise. Not exactly overly dense necessarily, but becoming fairly widespread visibilities down to a mile or two at times. And then by 9 a.m. it lifts out of here and we'll have a few peaks of sunshine as we get into the afternoon. And I think, by the way, Thursday morning and thereafter will be even more damp than what we'll have tomorrow. 53 in the morning, 65 at noon, 70 degrees for the high temperature. That's 67 in Bernie, 70 New Braunfels, 74 Nixon, Smiley, Floresville, Sutherland Springs as well at 74. And then temperatures aren't going to change a whole lot. We'll have that morning slop and uh, drizzly dampness, but highs will still be on the relatively warm side for this time of year, upper 60s and even on into the 70s. All right, Adam, thank you. It's game day. For it is USA. game day. And I'll tell you what, though, we have some breaking news right now. We don't know if Frank Harris is going to play tonight for the UTSA Roadrunners. Mary Rominger is live in Frisco with the latest on that. Plus, the Spurs are at the Bucks tonight, and this we do know Wimby is not playing. What does Zach Collins have to say about that? Coming up. It is time for the UTSA Roadrunners to go bowling tonight. They'll take on the Marshall Thundering Herd in the Scooters Coffee Frisco Bowl, looking to end the football season on a high note. Back in 2021, the Roadrunners faced San Diego State in Frisco at the Tropical Smoothie Cafe Frisco Bowl, and they lost 38-24. And this is bittersweet for the Roadrunners because it's the final college game for Frank Harris if he plays and Rashad Wisdom to the best to ever play for UTSA. Let's go live to Frisco now where Mary Romanjern has more. And Mary, is Frank going to play tonight? Yeah, Larry, right now it appears Frank Harris is unlikely to play. ESPN college football writer Pete Thamel said sources tell him that a decision likely won't be made until after warmups or during warmups, probably depending on how Harris is feeling, assuming it's injury. In that event, redshirt freshman Owen McCown would play. Now, entering this game, a lot has been made about Marshall's defense, specifically their pass defense. Marshall has accumulated 75 QB hits this season and seven forced fumbles. So it's possible this game comes down to the Roadrunners rush attack, which features a three headed monster made up of Kavorian Barnes, Rocco Griffin and Robert Henry. On the other side, the Roadrunners defense will be facing redshirt freshman QB Cole Pennington after Marshall's starter entered the transfer portal. I think it'll be a great test for us offensively. We got to go out there, um, not beat ourselves, don't make any mistakes on our own, uh, make sure we all need the right, the right people, and just go with our game plan and go out there and play football. Um, like Coach said, they're a great football team. They have a great defense, and we can't go out there and turn the ball over and make mistakes. UTSA looking for the program's first bowl win, possibly without Harris. Marshall is 13 and five all time in bowl games, looking to add another win. Kickoff is at eight and hey, Larry at six. We'll be talking about QB Frank Harris. We expected him to play and if he doesn't, it's just another reminder of all of the injuries that Harris has had to overcome. We hear from head coach Jeff Trailer and he shares a very uh, unique story about the situation back this offseason when it felt like Harris would never play football again. Thank you, Mary. It's also game day for the Spurs, who have a tough matchup in Milwaukee tonight at 7. The Bucks are 19-7, second in the East, while the Spurs are 4-21, last in the West. Spurs star rookie Victor Wimanyama is out tonight with right ankle soreness and will miss his second game of the season. He didn't face New Orleans some two and a half weeks ago with right hip tightness. Here's Zach Collins this morning from Shoot Around. Yeah, I mean, I think I think Victor's frustrated. He can't play, to be honest. I can't speak for him, but, you know, he's a competitor, so he wants to be out there. But, uh, you know, again, next guy up, we're ready for the challenge. All right, Spurs highlights on the night beat, and fingers crossed Frank Harris can suit up and play. You'd hate to see this be the last game, and he's on the side. Exactly. Yeah, thanks, Larry. Thank you. We'll be right back after this. You see a lot of rain chances there daily. None of them are especially high, but there will be sporadic light showers, maybe even a brief thunderstorm here and there, particularly Thursday through Sunday. More than anything, a lot of dampness, the morning drizzle, fog, mist, reduced visibility and uh, wet roadways, but it's not going to add to a whole lot. Christmas Day right now, looking partly to mostly cloudy, right near 70 and likely dry. All right. Thank you so much for watching the news at five. World News up next. We'll see you back here at six.